Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today we're going to be looking at the top 10 movies loosely connected to engineering. And when you say loosely, you mean there's some engineering component. There's some engineering component. So mine, I kind of ordered in like a mix of cool engineering and feasible engineering that happened in the movies. See, I did mine more inspirational. Like, oh, inspirational. like as I was a kid, I was watching these movies and I was really enjoying the movies. As I was coming in today, I was thinking, I bet Luke's list is really different because I noticed a trend in mine that, <laughs> that all of the movies I thought were awesome for engineering fell in the same time frame where I was a very impressionable youngster. So yeah. I'm thinking yours might be my, my, like a little earlier than mine, but like the same idea. My top my top eight probably fall into that category. All right. Well, let's get into it. How about you give me number 10 on your list? Number 10. This is, a, I'll say a relatively new one. This is October Sky. Have you heard of this movie? Never heard of it. Okay. October Sky is a... Uh, a real-life story based on the movie Rocket Boys. Rocket Boys! So Rocket Boys was a book that was based off of the childhood life of NASA engineer Homer Hickman. Wow. So Never this, heard of Homer Hickman either. I haven't either. But uh, So the movie is all about this, this young you know, teenage boy, and the Sputnik satellite has been launched, and you know, the whole Cold War is super active. You know, in the United States and, you know, the U.S. versus Russia, and he's inspired to <laughs> build a, a rocket. And the whole movie is about him making these homemade rockets and firing them, and ultimately he becomes a NASA engineer, which is pretty cool. So, wow, that sounds very inspirational. Very inspirational. Wow. Really good movie. Jake Gyllenhaal? Jake Gyllenhaal. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah, the Jakers He's is supposed to be a good-looking dude, right? A little bit. I'm told. Uh... Okay, well, that's interesting. I think we went very different directions with this. So, Well, this is my number 10. So that this, was number this, 10. This is my least. Well, let me get into number 10, and you'll understand yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> let me hear your number James, 10. James, number 10. Let's hear it. From 1989. Oh. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> Rick Moranis. Oh, my goodness. Creates a shrink ray, and you guessed it, it shrinks the kids. Uh, you have you watched Honey, I Shrunk I, the Kids? I have, unfortunately. Imagine that technology existing so that you could shrink down furniture and put it in your dollhouse, and then you could shrink your children, and they could fall out a window and then have to ride on ants and I, try I, and re, un, re, resize, unshrink. I don't know if I've disliked you any more than I do right now. <laughs> For Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. You don't like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids in, in in, like, as a movie or as this or all well, around? You just don't like Rick Moranis is what you're Rick saying. Rick Moranis is probably my issue. I could see that being an issue. Okay, I, I knew that was going to be a stretch, wow. but it just kind of was like, oh, I remember watching that in the theater. So maybe or, that. Okay, so just to be clear, your engineering is for some totally fictitious. No, only for some. So they're not all fictitious. They're not all fictitious. Oh, my goodness. And there's also a lot of trends from past episodes that we've done that have weaved their way into my picks. I feel like this is going to be at the end of this. What, what was that movie where at the end of the speech he says we are all dumber having listened to this? Was it Tommy Boy? Oh, yeah, I think or, it was or, Tommy or, or Boy. Or Adam Black Sandler or something, or something like that. Oh, yeah, the one where... Uh, <laughs> he gave this big impassioned speech and he says we are all dumber after listening. Yeah, he's I, in the contest with the guy and the wrestler comes out at the end. Yeah, I feel like yeah. we're going to be dumber All right. after hearing your let's, list. Let's hear number nine. My number nine is actually a great one, Apollo 13. Oh, that's pretty good. Is it even on your list? No. You're the worst. Yeah, I told you we went very different Yeah, so Apollo 13. That's really good. If you don't know Apollo 13, astronauts, moon, oxygen tank explodes, can't land, and basically all the engineers at NASA go crazy for four days figuring out how to take a broken spaceship and land it safely. So uh, it's a which, true story. Which turns out it happened. Yeah, it's actually a true story too, which is even more amazing. So I re so that one, again, it's a newer one. It was still probably, what, 10 years ago. All the great actors were in it, you know, Tom Hanks and uh, Kevin Bacon and Bill Pullman and all those folks. So 
Billy Madison. <laughs> Billy <laughs> Madison. You had to look it up, didn't you? I did. Okay. Uh, it was driving me nuts. Okay, okay so my, nine, my number was, nine is Apollo 13. It was just a stellar pick. It was. Now, this number nine for me goes back to another thing that I've admitted in the past on this show, and that's my love for the 1985 amazing movie Rocky IV. And I know you're like, what could Rocky IV possibly have to do with engineering, right? You gotta explain this to me, Lucy. You do you remember Polly from the movies? I do remember Polly. Polly has a robot, very similar to the AI robots that we just recently talked about. You mean and he has a robot because they're rich at this time because Rocky's famous and he's rolling in dough, right? I remember. And so Polly has this robot that's created just to help him out around the house and take care of him, oh which is awesome. Goodness. And so I love that it's it's like a futuristic looking robot, I remember. but it seriously looks exactly like robots that we have designed now. And the funny part is it's probably less functional than robots that we have right now. So since it ties into our episode so well, I really liked it. Plus, I mean, Rocky IV pretty much ended the Cold War, so how can you not like that? Yeah, well, but Apollo Creed dies. That was not that one. Oh, it was. Yeah, the Russian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was sad. Yeah. You picked the saddest Rocky movie possible. That's, that's the best known one, I think. Okay. Wow, that Rocky was, IV that, that's Robot. So They're I'm, going to get better, I I'm swear. Just, I'm just saying, none of your stuff is going to make the list. I think one of the four is going to make the list at this point. Go ahead. Number okay. eight. Number eight for me, the whole Back to the Future series. Oh. Hopefully that's on your list somewhere, but that's my number eight. Oh, so you're making fake things. Well, no. I mean, Doc Brown invented some legit things, too. They did the models whenever they needed to you know, figure out how to get hold on, back. Hold on, hold on. Let's try and make this one a little more collaborative. Okay. Because my number eight is, from 1985... Back to the Future. Nice. So, there we go. Sweet. That, uh, yeah, and so, I mean, the DeLorean, it can travel through time because of a flux capacitor, mm-hmm. which is amazing, just mm-hmm. so it's going, what, 88 miles per hour and mm-hmm. generating 1.21 1. 1. 1 gigawatts. Yep, gigawatts. Plus, if you look at the other things in the series, uh, like the hoverboard, that was yep. pretty cool. Yep. It's almost coming about, eh, sort of. I saw Buzz Aldrin was it. Pier 9, standing on a, a real-life hoverboard. Was? Yeah, I think it was Buzz. It was, it was one of the astronauts. Uh, he was hmm. down at Pier 9, actually standing on a legit hoverboard. Interesting. I think it was Buzz. I always thought it was really creepy that Marty's mom starts, like, falling in love with him. That was that weird. Was, that was a strange twist that I did not need. You know, my favorite of the Back to the Futures was actually... Not the cowboy one. It was. Uh-uh. There, so that one had some pretty cool engineering in it. He turned a train into a hovering time machine. He had that big, huge contraption that made the single ice cube. I feel like they really didn't do a lot of troubleshooting for those. I mean, after the first time you get stuck in the past, you think you probably would have avoided this problem. Yeah, Something I, would have been worked I out. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, that was That's good. I think Back to the Future's a solid pick. So again, not real engineering per se. Is, is this the first time on a top 10 list you and I have ever like come I, into agreement on like a number eight? I think that we've had similar things on the list but never at the same wow. spot okay so let's let's put a star by that yeah one. that's 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 definitely special so since we agreed you can go with your oh, number I can seven go with now number seven so my number seven was a 1979 classic we'll say that might be a stretch but i went with mad max I, I had that in oh, my is honor- that an honorable mention. It, I had it in my honorable wow. mention, and then I took it off. <laughs> oh wow! It, it almost earned an honorable almost. mention. So the reason I put it out there was kind of again we just talked about supercars, right? Which, yeah. So that kind of is like, oh, this is great. It, it fits right in. But if you think about it, they have a flying car, which is kind of cool. There's a flying car? I think there is a flying car in this, like, post-apocalyptic, maybe in one of the other ones, like, moving through the series. I think series. that's called a helicopter, an airplane, a not helicopter, a... helicopter, f- right? okay. Okay. But they also have the Special Pursuit, the last of the v- V8 interceptors, yeah. which is pretty awesome, and that's just a supercharged muscle car. I'm with and you. And it's just kind of like technology all throughout the whole thing. And then okay. there's Thunderdome if you go through the series a little further, which has a lot that's of That's cool, the Tina Turner one. Cool stuff as well, except for Tina Turner. I thought Tina Turner was the best part of Mad Max. Is that right? Well, maybe not. Okay. Well, okay. I thought that there was a lot of cool cars 
and fighting and yeah. weapons. Yeah, now and my technology. thing is, okay, so this is post-apocalyptic, right? It is. What do they do whenever they run out of spark plugs? There's just certain things you can't manufacture in a post-apocalyptic world, and that's I would guess. Probably not their biggest concern, but yeah, that's a valid question. Where would, I mean, I could see getting like old parts off of different cars, but like a wear component, like like tires, like w when you went through all the tires in the world, you don't have a manufacturing facility making more tires for you. Maybe civilization starts over again Maybe. Then, once they need tires. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, my number seven. Uh, this one was really impactful for me. The entire Alien series. So Alien, Aliens. I feel like you started out really strong with these inspirational, like actually happened movies, and now you're going Alien. No, see, the reason why Alien, Alien was, for me, it was the first sci-fi movie I've ever seen where... I imagined like the equipment and the machinery and the spacecrafts could actually be something that it was made. The best one was when she's fighting the alien, I think it's aliens or alien, she's in that big yellow robotic uh, suit. That's like what, a, a battle, what are they, Megabots? Yeah, it's exactly yeah. like Megabots. Yeah. And that was how many, if you look at a Megabot, it looks like that suit she was wearing that was used for unloading cargo. If you people listening have not, you people, if you all people. of our great community listening haven't <laughs> checked out Megabots, go Google that and see them fighting. It's and pretty I sweet. think they just did like, like the, th two, three weeks ago. Yeah, the, what was it, America versus Japan yeah. Megabot fight, which is pretty cool. I saw so a clip where out. one like pancaked another one on his back it was pretty sweet <laughs> they're pretty neat so i'll give you i'll give you points for that not only because we kind of have that now heck yeah but also you know what we can't prove that alien life and spacecrafts aren't out there so maybe the fact that we've never found it is kind of proof it, it's not okay. i think you're you're very short-sighted <laughs> Let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. We have a sponsor today, James? <laughs> we don't. Oh. Not only do we not have a sponsor, but Darn I didn't it. even find anyone worthy of a shout out. None? We had someone that we've given many shout outs to before. We can't write keep in and doing explain that. how you can put group texting on mute so you don't get alarmed. He did? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Oh, because off, off that was my rant last week. I know, week. he laughed about that. Uh, but other than that, uh, I just wanted to throw out please subscribe to Unprofessional Engineering because yes. that helps. And please write reviews on iTunes or wherever you go and that will help us become rich and famous. I don't know about that. Probably not, but it will maybe help someone else find it. Yeah. If you have any episodes you want us to research, anything we've said wrong, you just want to say hi, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com and if you happen to be going to Autodesk University, T minus what, five days or yeah, something like, like that? This this time next week, yeah. we will be podcasting from Live Autodesk from University. Las Vegas. Which is going to be Las sweet. Vegas. That's going to be awesome. A lot of cool interviews, a lot of cool uh, Autodesk employees. Limited, and ed community. limited edition unprofessional engineering t shirts yeah. and stickers are going to be available. That's the biggest thing at AU. Biggest thing. So if you're at AU, and you're not wearing one of our t-shirts or have one of our stickers on your computer or phone, you're literally not cool at all. Wow. Just I, saying. I wouldn't go that far. All right. So with that, let's move on to number six. Do you want my number six or yours? Uh, let's do your number six. All right. So I hope this one's on your list. And this is the last oh. of, this is the last of my, the last of my, yes, last the of last of my, it can't really ones. happen. It's not stupid. 1984 Ghostbusters. I, that didn't even. I totally, totally forgot about Ghostbusters. How can you not How have Ghostbusters? I, I feel like that's a great one. The proton packs, amazing, like super high beams of electricity or something like that. I yeah. don't even know what it they is. They were like nuclear reactors or something. So, yeah, something they? like that. Just so you don't cross the beams, you're all good. The only way to catch ghosts. Only way. Which is awesome. Of course. Plus, then they have that little trap, the ghost trap that they slide under yeah, there and they yeah. press it and it opens up and sucks the ghost down and holds it in there. If you need more engineering than that, you have the giant ecto containment unit, I yeah, think, which is yep. like that big safe thing that they jam the the traps into and let the ghosts mm -hmm. like float around in mm -hmm. there and then they have the smaller paranormal containment research tank to investigate these 
ghosts. I totally, totally dropped the ball on that one. It's a good one, right? Yeah, that definitely is in the top ten. What's the uh, what's the car? The Ecto, Ecto. The Ecto one or Ecto something? Ecto one wasn't is it? that it? Yeah, I knew it was Ecto and number. But. Now, were you around for the Ghostbuster cartoon series? Yes, I love that. So I'm fairly certain that that was after my. Like, I may have been just a, a little too old for that. Okay. So, just throwing that out there. <laughs> you just wanted to point out that you're old? No. Oh, well, I, I don't know. That's good. So, I didn't have to do it. Yeah. All right. You, you always do. Okay. My number six. This, this is, and I can't believe it's only number six. It really should probably be in the top three. Short Circuit. Steve oh, Gutenberg boy. at his best. And Ali Sheedy, I think is how you say her name. It was... I mean, when you can take a robot and make him funny, it was... Johnny Five? Yeah, oh, Johnny Five. Oh, I thought that was the most amazing. And I loved how it was like the exact opposite of typical robots. Usually a robot is like a good robot, and then they use it for evil in wartime. These were like war robots that turned into a comedian. You do like that uh, love it. family-friendly twist, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, but Steve Gutenberg, one of my favorite <sighs> actors of all time. I hate to admit it, but I feel like this bumps Polly's robot right off the list because <laughs> this is so much better than than a birthday cake serving robot. That definitely definitely oh, bumps Polly's robot. Oh, that's a great pick. That, well that, done. Did that was that even in your list? No, I forgot about short circuit. Isn't that circuit. crazy how you yeah. forget about these? Like I didn't even think about ghost. And there's like four hundred and seventy short circuit movies, so I don't know how I missed missed all of that. Uh, all right, number five for me. Shoot. And this this is now switched my strategy here so these I've are gone legit. from from cool engineering that i wish could happen to i could make that happen okay number five caddyshack oh my goodness. 1980 <sighs> rodney dangerfield creates a golf bag that could do like anything so if you're like a golfer like me and you're not like oh. always real good sometimes you want to just have fun while you're out there mm -hmm. so you have a golf bag that has a stereo built into it i remember not him dancing only does on it the green have the stereo but it's playing journey so how does it get much better than that yep then, I agree. then it automatically ejects the golf clubs from the bag for you which is pretty awesome because then you don't have to go in there and get them and it has a beer keg a beer keg built into the bag what else do you need you don't need to wait for the the cart to come around and serve you now, beer or a drink you I, just have it cold right there i feel like this is one of those things where if you went on brookstone.com you might be I, able to find I it i yeah. bet you brookstone has something because i've seen like the the golf clubs you can put liquor in uh-huh at like places where they don't allow you to have liquor on a golf course and you like turn the golf club upside down so i've, I've seen I've, that kind of yeah. stuff See, that's what I'm saying. It's like these movies that I've come up with now have inventions that you could make, and it's showing that engineering was used in a great comedy. You're did the you one. like Caddyshack? I did. I was did? I was a big, big fan of Caddyshack. Oh, man, I love Caddyshack. See, I can't believe I, I would think you were too young for Caddyshack. I think that one withstood the test of time. It's still funny today. Exactly. Inappropriate in a lot of different ways. Right. But, oh yeah. But pretty funny. Probably a PG-13 movie. I'm not sure what it was rated. I don't know. I just, <laughs> never mind. Let's not get into that. Yeah, Let's do yeah. number five. For okay, you. my number five is War Games. War Games? So this is uh, Matthew Broderick, so Ferris Bueller. This was the first time, like, computers were really cool on TV. Remember? He was... Um, I don't remember. That's uh, what I said. Hmm. He, he thought he was playing a game called Thermonuclear War. And here he accidentally hacked oh, into the old. I think I'm playing a video game, but I'm really blowing stuff yeah, up. Yeah, and, and then what it comes down to at the very end of the movie is he's playing tic tac toe with a computer in in one. Oh, he played so, tic tac toe. Okay, yeah. well that's interesting. Uh, I guess uh, I yeah. guess that's great. So for me, that that made computers cool. That I mean, made that's why I liked it because before then it was just like. Everybody had like a Commodore 64, and that was like, yeah, your wire has to quit hitting your microphone. Yeah. Uh, so I was <laughs> thinking about the made computers cool thing. Did you have one? No, but I was thinking about putting, uh, what was that Facebook movie called? Mm. The network or the, the ne social yeah, network? Yeah, social, ne social network, yeah. yeah. So I thought it was about, all about adding how, that on there. It was all about how, what's his name? Zuckerberg stole Stole Facebook. it from his buddies yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyways, number four for me. Speaking of 
Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Number four is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, that's in my honorable mention. Is it? So I could see that being in the top ten, potentially. Okay. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, he uses, like, all the oldest tricks in the book, which is pretty cool, where he ties a string to his door, which is hooked up to, uh, like, a audio tape, mm-hmm. and it starts playing that. And he has the mannequin in the bed so that the mom and dad think he's sleeping in bed and he's snoring and then he's like reciting lines like, no, I have to go to school. I don't want to miss school. Well, if you think I'm too sick and all of this not only gets him out of going to school, which I don't condone. Not at all. No, but it gave him like the best day of his life singing in a parade and driving, I think, a Corvette around and wrecking said Corvette out of window. It was not a Corvette. Wasn't it? No, it was, oh, a, it? I believe it was, it was a, it was an old Ferrari, I believe. Okay, well, whatever it was. It was his friend's dad's car. My biggest learning from that movie was if you drive a car in reverse, it does not it take does miles not. off. That is great information to know. If you're ever going to take your parents' car and don't want the miles to get counted, which we do not condone... No, driving no, in reverse actually adds mileage. Yes. So I think Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a great application of outside the box thinking. Uh, very outside the box. Yes. Okay. Okay. My number four. my number four. Uh, Willy Wonka. Oh, see, I had that in my honorable mentions, but so, again, it's not realistic, so it didn't make it. No, it's not. But Gene Wilder, uh, who's actually. Oh, you don't want the Johnny Depp one. Uh, Johnny Depp? They remade Oh, the Johnny Depp. Oh, my Johnny goodness. Depp. No, that's the worst. Okay. So Gene Wilder, probably one of my greatest childhood memory movies ever, but all the crazy things he made, the elevator at the very end that could go anywhere in the the plant just yeah, by pushing a button. It could go thing. up, down, left, right. Just absolutely amazing. Could it go diagonal? Um, my guess is it could go probably, diagonal. Right? But, yeah, one of my favorite movies, and just the contraptions were so cool. The contraptions were great. The whole, the pipes that sucked up Augustus Gloop was <laughs> really Augustus. good. The The track that the golden egg mm-hmm. rolled down and the bratty one got thrown away because mm-hmm. she's a bad egg. Uh, Mike TV. Mike TV. Getting turned into particles and, like, exactly. what was that? Smell, what was it? No, it wasn't smell. It was Wonka Vision. Wonka Vision. Yeah, Wonka Vision. What else would bet. it be? I don't know. And then the the wallpaper that you could taste that has snozberries. You remember wow. that? Wow. Yeah. You know an amazing amount of detail about these <laughs> about things. Really Wonka. Snozberries. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll do number three, and then we're going to take a break. Okay, okay? perfect. So number three. Now, these last three for me, I think, are all winners. So these can't be out great. of the top ten. They I, have to be in the top well, ten. Well, we'll debate. We're going to fight. I think they're great. Okay. Number three, 1990. Home Alone. Boom. You're speechless because that's such a good pick. Home Alone. Okay. It kid is gets, it is it is my number one in my honorable mention. Kid gets left home alone, knows that there's bad guys out to get him, and he's able to rig up his whole house to look like there's a giant party going on. He has mannequins again mm-hmm. being moved around by strings, which is awesome. He has like trains going around and moving people Cardboard around. Cardboard like cutouts, I remember that. Then after after that amazing feat of engineering, he has the whole house booby trapped in very basic yet in, in ingenuitive and Inge- I don't creative ways creative. <laughs> where he's paint cans on strings yep, yep. knocking people out. He uses water to turn into ice and freeze and make things slippery. He throws micro machines down to slide and trap people. I he uses the cutters machines. to cut the rope so people can't get by. And then to cap it all off, I like that the sticky bandits would flood the places because I like to think that would wash evidence away. Well, okay, so let's go back to the, your very beginning statement. I think this is, movie is more about poor parenting than anything. The fact that you could actually get onto a plane and leave the country. Weren't there like, like 13 kids, though? Even still, it's your child. I have zero kids, and there's probably a good reason for that. But I, I just don't. It, I don't it's, know. it's poor parenting. Well, that's fine. It doesn't mean it's not good engineering. And okay, kids. From like a nine-year-old. Kids, if you're ever left at home alone by yourself, just go to the police station. Don't fight like the the I wet think you're bandits. Missing, I think they're the sticky bandits, aren't the, they? Or are they the wet bandits? The wet bandits, because it was wet, not oh. the sticky. Where'd I thought you there was. Sticky? But when he in the next one, when he hits his hand in the change jar, and he, or the I don't remember. Uh, anyways, okay. Uh, maybe it was the wet bandits. Uh, anyways, 
Number three. Number three for me is Frankenstein. Ugh. Now, hold on, hold on. It's young Frankenstein. Oh, no. Gene Wilder Goodness. a second time. Yeah, no. Go ahead. You can try, but no. You're not even... <laughs> what? No. I mean... What if I said the original... What if I said I've, Frankenstein? I had almost Frankenstein in my honorable mentions, but it's like... Uh, I electrocuted it and back to life, like just so unrealistic. Yeah, but like you're 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 taking body parts and sewing them together, so there's some anatomy. I'll, I'll keep it in there's there like some... a maybe. Okay. But and then you went young Frankenstein on top of it. Yeah, because oh, I mean, like, how can you with Igor? Peter Feldman playing Igor was yeah. just the most amazing. <laughs> Walk this way. I'm glad what I at hump? least know these movies that you picked, or some of them. What was the name of the brain? Abby. Uh, Abby Normal. Yeah, Abby Normal. <laughs> Come on, it was the best. <laughs> okay. All right, let's take a break for this week's Luke's Terrible Engineering. Okay, so I, I wasn't prepared for terrible engineering that's, today. That's shocking. Which is shocking. But it, it hit me just as I was looking at our webcam. So the fact that webcams and this isn't this is more again this isn't just terrible engineering it's, it's potentially terrible technology uh the fact that webcams turn on automatically in certain applications oh, terrible is, that is a great so thing. stupid so this is years and years ago i was on a google hangout and i think i may have told you this story before and my boss is like, hey, let's use Google Hangout. This is when Google Hangout was new. We all got our, our, our Google Plus accounts. You were one of the seven people that used it. I was. And she's like, let's do a Google Hangout. There was like six of us on the team. We were dispersed all over the U.S. It was obviously early morning for me. I work at home. And I decide to attend the meeting. And I didn't realize Google Hangouts automatically turned on your webcam. Well, here I am, you know, two and a half minutes into the meeting. And I have no shirt on because I'm at home, right? I got my house pants on, you know, it was hot, you know, whatever. So I'm just st sitting there in front of my computer. And my boss said something to the effect of, hey, Luke, just so you know, the webcam's on. I was like, oh, yeah. And I didn't realize, like, the, the, the magnitude of what she said. And then I looked in the upper left-hand corner, and there was a little itty-bitty box of me with no shirt on. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. So now, almost every one of my computers that I have, this one I don't have it, but I put a piece of black I tape don't blame anyone on for the camera. That. Absolutely. So if you make technology that accesses webcams, make it not on by default. It should be like, you have to like click that button like six times to turn that on because you never know what's happening when people are in meetings okay i agree i think google hangout could be another one because that thing flopped yeah it did. i thought it had a Big great time. marketing plan where mm -hmm. you had to be invite only for yep. a while yep but boy did that because everybody wanted it. i remember people right. were clamoring oh, yeah. to get that oh i need to get my google hangout you know i don't know if it even exists anymore okay all right so into our top two now i think my top two are gangbusters they're definitely in the top 10 probably in the top five so okay. let's have you go with number two my number two is goonies Ah, my number two is Goonies, <laughs> yes, 1985. Sweet. Oh my goodness! So the Goonies are amazing, and it's it just got to be all the cool stuff that Data yeah. did. He had like the shoes that would spit oil. He had the the, the shoes that spit oil. The, yeah, the, the teeth that like would jump the out and grab teeth stuff that could save you from falling. The 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 door to the house was on like a pulley system, and they made Chunk do the the truffle, the truffle shuffle, shuffle before yeah. he was allowed to come in. So I absolutely and. It was just the coolest movie. It, Growing up with that movie was amazing. Yeah. My wife has never seen The Goonies. Oh, my goodness. It, it makes me question my decisions. It does. It does. I wouldn't have married her. No. Just I mean, saying. That's, yeah. But she, he, had, she, he also had the zip line. Oh. that he Like, it was basically blocks of wood and stuff, mm -hmm. and he rolled down the zip line. Mm -hmm. And he had... The, the I think it's the bully buster I think they call it okay and it was like the boxing <laughs> glove that shoots out of the belt yeah and like punch the guy in the out. face yeah that's like, right he makes the greatest inventions plus one of the guys from the Goonies like the main Goonie mm -hmm. uh, he's on season two of Stranger Things right now he is yeah Bob the... Bob the new boyfriend okay on Stranger Things I don't watch Stranger Things oh you're missing out sorry after after did you finish Game of Thrones? I've been watching it. Haven't finished, but I've been watching well, it. Once you finish that, maybe you should get on to uh, okay. on to Stranger Things. We'll check so, it out. Number two, I'm happy that we matched yeah. yet again. So that's great. And give me your number one. My number I one. Think mine's great. If we match again, I'm going to be so upset. My number one is E.T. E.T. Oh, E.T. Now, what's, what's great about the engineering so, in that? So number one, 
E.T. is an alien, if you've never seen it. <laughs> Extraterrestrial. <laughs> if you've been living in a cave. If you've been living in a ever, cave. Uh, and your parents are bad and haven't shown it to you. Yes. Um, but basically, you know, he can't communicate. He figures out a way to communicate. He takes a speaking spell and hooks it up with some other, you know, things and makes a interstellar communication device so that he can phone home. I literally, I had a speaking spell from whenever I was a little kid. And when... I saw that movie like that night. I asked my dad for a screwdriver, and I took the speak and spell because apart. That's what you do. And that was literally the beginning of my, uh, I'll call it my my personal maker movement. So I was taking <laughs> alarm clocks apart, speak and spells apart. I was building all kinds of crazy contraptions in my room, but absolutely loved the idea of the speak and spell and pulling it apart and turning it into something. Wow. Okay. Is that even on your list? No. Honorable mention? No. What? So the rest of my honorable mentions were RoboCop, Terminator, Planet Terror, if you've ever seen I that. I don't remember that one. She has a machine gun leg, which is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, Men in Black and Iron Man. So, so what's your number one? You didn't give me your number one. I did not. My number one. Oh, my goodness. Wait if for this it, is stupid, I'm going to be so mad at you. It's actually outstanding. 1985, yet again. 85 is a good year for you. It was. Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, my goodness. Thank <laughs> Do you oh. remember Pee-wee's Big Adventure? If He woke up every morning. All he had to do was move a candle. Yeah, I... And, and let me see what I can tell you about it. I, have it, I, ha- I watched it again last night just for this. Uh, it was a breakfast-making machine, which was totally epic. And so it would cook eggs, make toast, and waffles. All you had to do is light the candle, and the, the candle would burn a string, which would drop an anvil that turns a Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel sends the egg, and it gets held together by squirt guns with things on the end. Okay. And then one of those birds that pecks back and forth would peck the eggs until it cracks it and drops the egg into the frying pan, and it would start cooking the eggs. Oh. Then there were all these other contraptions where it would flip the pancakes, and they'd stick to You're the way too excited about this. Down. Oh my gosh! What are those? What are those machines called? The, uh, Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg machine. It's like the ultimate Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, so and it is amazing. So, I totally missed that. I that will be in the top ten. I think okay. when we argue this out. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't even on my list. But, but come it, on, that's a great. It should be. Okay, so here's my honorable mentions. Okay. Um, I did have. Home Alone, in my honorable mention. Big Hero 6, animated. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, a great yeah. one. Saw that one a few years ago. He actually 3D printed in the preview, and then in the movie, he didn't do 3D printing. Total letdown. Uh, the Terminator series. Uh, how, to yeah, train your dra- how to Train Your Dragon. I love those movies, so, but I don't see what's engineering about them. He made all those contraptions because, remember, he oh, lost his, right. he, he lost his right. arm or his leg, that's and he had one. all these levers for creating and flying and doing different things. Uh, I got Rambo. Did wow. you have Rambo? I did not have Rambo. So Sylvester Rambo was a little bit before my time. Yeah, so well. Sylvester, this is all before your time. Sylvester Stallone made all kinds of crazy outdoorsy, you know, fighting, catching things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, Family Guy, Stewie is an amazing inventor. It's I know that's movie, not a movie, but, yeah, but I got to give him some inventor. credit. Project X, this was okay. the uh, the X-Men? monkeys in space. Oh, okay. No, Project X, this is the monkeys in space. Another Matthew Broderick movie, I believe. Oh, boy, we, we're big on Matthew Broderick. We, we love Matthew Broderick. And I had Ferris Bueller's. Okay, okay. so let's, I, let's... I also had the Sandlot as an honorable mention. Because Sandlot? when they, oh, they make goodness. like a giant erector set creation to try and get the ball back yeah, from the dog. That's yeah. right, I forgot I that about that. One. All right, so I figure... Goonies has to be number one because we both yeah. had it at number two. Goonies is definitely number it one. It got the most total votes. Yep, I'm with you. Uh, then, then what do you want to go with? We have Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Home Alone, Short Circuit, Ghostbusters. I, I, I think sh- I think Short Kiwi. Circuit or Home Alone's got to be number two. Well, I'll give you Short Circuit because that's really good. Okay. And then Home Alone. Home Alone. So then what's number four? I think Pee Wee has to be number four. I, you know what? I'll give that to you. I totally Thanks. missed that one because I remember watching. I watched Pee Wee's Playhouse. Were you a Pee Wee's oh, Playhouse yeah. watcher? Okay. Yeah, I like that with the genie and all that. Uh, Back to the Future, Apollo 13, Ghostbusters. A uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters number five. Mm hmm. Okay. How about Back to. Which, I feel like Apollo 13 is really. Yeah, good. that's a good one. Uh, but is it that high? It's very inspirational. But in its real life. Yeah, let's go with Apollo 13. 
Where are we at? We're at, We're at number six. So we have seven, eight, nine, and ten. So did we we did Home Alone. We did, mm-hmm. oh, how about Ferris Bueller? Yeah, Ferris Bueller's Ferris definitely in the top ten. Ferris Bueller's. Uh, Goonies, we have Pee Wee, we have Shirts, we have uh, Back to the Future. We didn't have Back, yeah, to, the back to the Future. Yeah, Back to the Future. Back to the Future, Apollo 13. So those are all the ones that I marked off. Okay. So what I would be willing to put in there is <laughs> E.T., Caddyshack, Willy Wonka. If, if you give me Willy Wonka, I'll give you Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Really? And Honey, I Shrunk the Kids has to be number 10. It can't be before Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka. And honey, I shrunk the kids. So let me hear the top ten, and hopefully our, our listeners can chime in on if they agree or disagree. Yeah, let us know what we're missing, because I'm sure we missed something. I'm sure. But number ten, honey, I shrunk the kids. Nine, Willy Wonka. Uh, eight, Back to the Future. Seven, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Six, Apollo 13. Mm-hmm. Five, Ghostbusters. Four, which I could even see it as three, would be Pee Wee's Play or Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure. <laughs> Three would be Home Alone, two Short Circuit, and clearly number one is Goonies. the Goonies movie. Okay. The fact that Goonies is above a real life Apollo 13 <laughs> movie is a little, the fact that any of these are above Apollo 13 is a little disappointing, but you know, it is our opinion. That's it's right. not necessarily fact. Let us know what you think about our opinions and mm-hmm. how great they are. Email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com, and we will be happy, happy to get back to you about why your movies are not as good as ours. Exactly. All right, until next week. See ya.